Hey guys, welcome to lesson six, and we're going to talk about factoring polynomials completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, use things that we learned in previous lessons and apply it to this lesson. Um, so the first thing to kind of get your mind going is what are some words for solutions? Like if we solve a polynomial, um, what could we call that? Well, it can be called any of these things. We've heard it um, been called zero, like if you're going to find the zero of the function. Um, they're also called roots. And then really, they're the x-intercepts. So if I have a polynomial um, that does this, these are going to be my solutions or my roots or my zeros, and they're the x-intercepts. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is I'm going to focus on this word. Um, what is a root versus a factor? So let's kind of think about that. So we just said before that a root is like your answer. So you're going to end up with x equals something. Um, so it's your solution versus a factor. That's when you break it down into pieces. So you might find the factors, then find the root or the solution to it. So just make sure that when you're answering your problems, you ask yourself, is the problem asking for a root or a solution, or is it asking for a factor? So just don't get, um, don't get those mixed up. So does the answer want a root or does the answer want a factor? So get that clear before you answer it. And the one um, last thing that I want to talk about before we really get going is this. So this notation, um, uh, it trips people up a lot. So f of 2 equals 0. So what this is doing is it's giving you an xy coordinate. So normally we see like f of x equals blah, blah, blah. So that 2, that is your x coordinate. And this 0 that is your y coordinate. So you're going to see that come up, and I just wanted to kind of point that out. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to see problems like this completely factor. So when I think factor, I think of this the given polynomial, um, given that x minus 8 is a factor. So essentially, what we're going to be doing is dividing this polynomial by x minus 8. And you learn how to do that easily with synthetic division. So I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to have, if this is x minus 8, I'm going to have 8 go in our box. And then I'm just going to set up that synthetic division. And go ahead and do that. You should be pretty good at it by now. Let's see what you get. Okay, so if something is a factor, it has a remainder of zero. So if it had anything other than zero here, I would say you are a liar. X minus eight is not a factor. But because it has no remainder, that is true. It is a factor. So I don't have to put the remainder down. I'm just going to put this as my answer. So let's kind of clean it up. And again, it's just the answer to the synthetic division. It's not our final answer. Okay, so I've broken this up into two pieces, and let's go, let's just use like normal um, numbers to kind of wrap our minds around this. So let's pretend I said that, um, let's see, 4 is a factor of 32. So I'm going to prove that, and I'm going to set it up as 32 divided by 4. Okay, and I figure out that that's 8. So instead of saying 32, I'm going to break it up in these two pieces, 4 times 8. And so basically that's what I'm doing right here. I'm breaking it up, this times this equals this. And so we're just making it look different. Again, factoring, you're just breaking it up into smaller pieces. So um, anytime you have a quadratic, um, if it is factorable, we are able to break that down. So I don't really care about this x minus 8. I'm just going to drop it and kind of ignore him. Um, but I'm really focused on this right now. So see if you just had that, if you can factor that. Okay, so hopefully you can see that um, two factors of 8 that add to give you 6, and so that's 4 and 2, so I broke it up into x plus 4 and x plus 2. And so this is my final answer, uh, the final factor form of this polynomial. 
So that's what we're going to be doing. Notice it didn't say solve. If we solved it, we would say like x equals a, x equals negative 4, x equals negative 2. But it doesn't say that. It just says to factor it. So see if you can do um, this next one here. Okay, so this problem is very similar to the other one. Um, so the first thing I did was synthetic division. And notice that this, um, there's no remainder. So I took my information here and brought it up. Um, as x squared minus 7x plus 12, and then I just factored that and dropped that down, and that's it. Okay, um, so we have one more that is like what we've been doing, so go ahead and do that, and then we're going to kind of switch gear. Okay, so again, just like the last one, um, I start out synthetic division, and this one here, and I just continue to drop that, and then I just broke up my information that I received from the synthetic division um, and factored that. And so this is my final answer. Okay, so let's kind of go back. Um, let me erase this a little bit. So we have this information. So um, I told you that negative 3 represents my x value and um, 0 represents my y value. What this tells me is that negative 3 is a solution to our problem. So it's one of the solutions. So let's go up here. So if I had um, this, it would cross here at negative 3. So just kind of visually wrap your mind around um, what's going on there. So um, the factor of that we're going to kind of go back and forth and leave in the same place. Um, the factor of that would be x plus 3, right? Because if I solve for that, it would be x equals negative 3. Well, we haven't really talked about this before, but really the solution is what goes in the boxes. So that's what you're solving for. So notice that x minus 1, your solution is 1. If I had x plus 9, your solution is negative 9. So here, it already gives us our solution as x equals negative 3. So when you have that, when you have the setup where your y equals 0 and it gives you some x value, that is the solution, and you can just start off putting that in the box. Okay, so um, other than that, it's the same. So go ahead and do synthetic division and see what you get. Okay, so I want to start um, stop here. So we found that we have this. Um, there's something else that's very different about this problem. It asks for the other zeros. So we know that a zero or a solution is x equals negative 3, and we're trying to find the other one. So I'm going to leave that alone, and so I'm going to really focus on the outcome of what I received over here. So x squared minus 5x minus 6. So let's um, go ahead and factor that, break that down. Um, so we have x minus 6, x plus 1. And so if I were to find the solution of that, um, I'm going to set this equal to 0. So for this one, x equals 6. And for this one, oops, this one, x equals negative 1. And so notice the difference between the two. It's asking for the other zeros or the other solutions. And so this answer looks very different than this where it says completely factor, where we break it up into pieces. Okay, so the next one, um, given the polynomial function and a zero of f, find the other zero. So this one, it doesn't give it to you in this form. It just tells you that 7 is a solution. So this is kind of nice. We can just jump there and throw it in the box, do synthetic division, and um, continue on. Okay, so the factored form of this is 2x minus 3 times 5x plus 2. And then I'm going to set each one of these equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 equals 0, and 5x plus 2 equals 0. So 2x equals 3, x equals 3 halves, and 5x equals negative 2, x equals negative 2 fifths. So those are my final two um, pieces that I'm missing. So x equals 7, x equals 3 halves, and x equals negative 
two-fifths. Okay, for our last one, um, it's going to start out the same way, but it's a little bit yuckier. So let's see how far um, we can go with this one. So go ahead and start it out and see where you get. Okay, so you should have been able to get this far. Um, the problem with this, and hopefully you're seeing this, you cannot factor this guy. This guy is not factorable. So um, we are going to have to do the quadratic formula um, to solve for this. So go ahead and do that and see what you get. Okay, there is a lot going on here. So I started off with just substituting in the a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so um, I found the discriminant underneath the square root, which was 56. And then I just simplified 56, the square root of 56. So um, I showed my work right here, and ended up being 2 square root of 14. And um, I ended up with this setup. And so make sure that you're kind of able to look at this as two different fractions. So negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2, and then plus or minus um, this, 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So there's like one half if you if you need to put that there. So um, this was my final answer, but it's not really answering um, the question up here. So remember it said um, find the other zero. So we have x equals nine, and then notice this guy. These are our two other answers. So I have negative two plus negative two plus square root of fourteen over two, and negative two minus square root of fourteen over 2. So these are my three answers, um, my three solutions for this polynomial. And we are done.